All right, before you make the move to Fort Lauderdale in 2024, make sure you watch this video. These are seven things you need to know or at least think about before making the move here. Hey guys, it's Robert. Welcome to my channel. I put out videos all the time about moving to and living here in South Florida. I am also a local real estate agent and would love to earn your business if you're making a move here to the area. So if you have any plans relocating, if you have a house to sell here locally, reach out anytime. I'd love to help you get the process started, whether it's next week, next month, or next year. So let's dive into today's video. All right, guys. So again, we're talking about things you need to know or at least think about before making the move to Fort Lauderdale and first we have to start with how expensive it is for home insurance. Now there are a lot of different reasons why home insurance here in South Florida is so expensive. Let's just start out by being in an area where there's a lot of storms. So areas like here in Florida, hurricanes, uh, California it's expensive as well because of the earthquakes. Hawaii has volcanoes, but any area where there are natural disasters, you're in home insurance, premiums are gonna be much, much higher. Now, unfortunately for us Floridians, we happen to be in this state where uh, insurance fraud is rampant. So that has a lot to do with why the premiums are very high as well. And a lot of times people that are reaching out through the channel, when they see what the rates are, they're really, really taken taken back by how expensive it is. And even people that have owned for a long time, their rates are being adjusted and going up as well. So it's really, really a horrible situation. I heard recently that this year there are about six new carriers that are writing policies throughout the area, which is very, very good news, but insurance premiums are just out of hand. Now it's very hard to give somebody a ballpark figure on uh, what a premium would be. There's a lot of different factors that go into it. The age of the house, the age of the roof, how the roof trusses are attached to the house, things like wind protection here in Florida, very crucial with hurricanes. But if you're gonna be a little more inland and away from the coast, usually your premiums will be a lot lower. Average and in general, insurance premiums throughout the area are very, very expensive. Definitely something that you need to know and you'll, you'll figure this out pretty quickly when you start looking into pricing as far as what it's gonna cost to move here. Now, the second thing I gotta talk about and I don't talk about it too much are the bugs and the critters. And the reason I wanna bring this up is that my brother-in-law just got out of the hospital because he was bitten by some sort of a spider. That's the second person or relative in the last couple of years has had the same issue being bitten by a spider now I haven't had that experience myself so if you don't like bugs or critters in any way you might want to put off moving to the state of Florida because we have everything you can think of so mosquitoes we're getting into the rainy season uh, at the end of May heading into June also this is hurricane season so that's another story so we have a bunch of different bugs uh, spiders I just mentioned ants it's ant season right now also we have flying cockroaches if you can believe that palmetto bugs which are not very fun also fire ants so if you like to walk around in nature around sand if you see a little bit of a mound be careful if you step on a uh, fire ant I guess they call it mound or nest and they start crawling on you uh, it hurts to get stung by a fire ant we also have a bunch of different critters so we're famous for our alligators bull sharks uh, lizards snakes so we have pretty much everything. Oh yeah, another thing too, coyotes is the new thing I've been hearing a lot about. So uh, on Facebook, we all have these neighborhood groups. So there's a lot of coyotes spotted in a lot of different areas. I see them in plantation where I live, Coral Springs, uh, Weston. We're really anywhere where there's a path or an easement or a long canal that a, um, a coyote can travel down from say the Everglades or some sort of a wooded area, they're gonna be at. So that's a new thing. So again, if you do not like wildlife and critters and bugs, you might wanna rethink moving to the state. Now, another thing you wanna know about is all the construction happening everywhere. And this is happening through all our cities throughout the greater Fort Lauderdale area. I just did a video of them doing some uh, work in Coral Springs, right downtown. Uh, University and Sample Road. Here in Plantation, we have construction, I uh, probably nine or 10 that I can think of right by my house. Everywhere, Fort Lauderdale, they're building everywhere. A lot of these um, construction sites are mixed use projects. So what they're doing is they're taking older malls and uh, strip 
you know, strip mall type of thing and making like new downtown areas and they're mixed use. So they're gonna have retail, they're gonna have rental, townhomes, um, business, office space, restaurants, eateries, a lot of things like that. Almost like Meisner Park type of thing in Boca. Pretty much like that. That was really like the catalyst or a case study, if you will, way back in the 90s about using a mixed-use space and how that can really turn an area around. And they're doing that right here in Plantation, where I live. Plantation Walk was an old mall. Uh, the fashion mall that was sitting dormant for, geez, it had to be 20 years or so. And right now that's being built out into a mixed uh, use space. So that is happening everywhere. And that leads me into my next thing you need to know about is new construction. I get this question all the time from people reaching out that one of their criteria that they want or one of their main wants when looking for a new property is new construction and unfortunately we don't have much of that here in the greater fort lauderdale area you're gonna have to go north for that but if you do they're building any place they could find a place to build so the newest uh, development in boca is lotus palm and you can see that's very far west and what they're doing is they're taking over old golf courses or agricultural area and making them into new subdivisions avenir is another popular one up in Palm Beach but if you want new construction you're going to have to go up north into Palm Beach and actually up further all the way up towards Port St. Lucie because there's really nothing to do or no place to build in the greater Fort Lauderdale area unless it's a condo and they're building a bunch of those as well so any place that they have a little area to build or to knock down an older building and make it into a newer more luxury modern building they are doing it so construction is happening all over south florida something you definitely want to know and if you visit here you'll notice it right away as you start traveling around now the next thing unfortunately is a lot of retirees are moving out of south florida and it's just getting too expensive for them especially when they're on a fixed income and when everything is getting more expensive as far as owning a home so association dues if they're in so, some sort of a complex which a lot of them are home insurance Insurance premiums like we mentioned when they've gone up almost double in the last three four years now a lot of the retirees are moving up north to say Orlando Tampa Central Florida but even that is more expensive or too expensive for them and unfortunately a lot of them are moving out of state heading over to places like Tennessee so let's just see what happens with inflation you know with the prices going up so quickly rapidly and if it comes under control inflation and things go back down maybe not as many retirees would be leaving the state but it's fortunately right now getting a little too expensive for them and a lot of them are leaving and that will lead me to the next thing on the list and that is that locals are getting priced out of the real estate market so there's been a lot of inbound migration into the state a lot of people coming here from very high priced areas new york and california a lot of people moving here with money a lot of businesses moving here with employees in place uh remote jobs which is not as much as it was in the past but there's still a lot of them and these people are coming here with built-in salaries that are working for these companies unfortunately locals that have local salaries are not able to compete and especially with the prices going up so rapidly um taxes going up insurance going up everything going up the locals are finding that they cannot afford to purchase a home here and that's another thing that's very very unfortunate and the last thing on the list guys is that housing inventory is still very very low it's still very hard to find a house because there's still more buyers out there even though it's still very expensive there just is not enough inventory and there are still enough buyers out there and anything that comes in the market is gone awfully quick now there's a, a few reasons for this the first one is that there's really no incentive for someone to move unless they actually have to make the move the only people moving right now are people that have some sort of a life event uh, meaning they have to move it's not something that they just want to do or think it's a good idea those people are staying put i can't tell you how many people that i speak to that want to move but they just won't because it does not make financial sense for them we're talking people that are widowers that are in a giant house four or five bedrooms by themselves and they always say to me where am i going to go if i sell my house i'll get a good price for it but then well, what am I going to buy? It's going to be very expensive to buy. The taxes are going to be way more expensive. So it doesn't make any sense to move. Uh, that's another thing I want to go into here is that a lot of people that reach out when it comes to property taxes, when they look at the listed taxes on a property, 
you have to remember once you purchase your taxes are going to adjust to the new purchase price or assessed value um, we deal with a lot of probate and estates as well and a lot of people that inherit homes they want to keep them as second homes and sometimes they don't understand that if their parent was in this house for 20 years and their taxes are say four thousand around that area and that they've owned the property for like i said 20 years and it's an eight hundred thousand dollar property once the title changes uh the house is going to adjust as far as taxes once the deed is recorded and it's not going to be a primary residence anymore and the taxes will probably triple now we have something here called um, homestead portability where someone if they move they want to give them the incentive that they can port over a lot of their homestead savings from being their primary residence so it will cause them to want to make a move just like i said a lot of people aren't moving but in that case of a, a new purchase or a probate or something like that that's not the case especially if it's not going to be a primary residence but you cannot port over that savings so you need to make sure that when you're looking at the listed property taxes make sure you understand what they're going to adjust to so there you go guys things that you absolutely need to think about before making the move to fort lauderdale in 2024 if you have any questions about Fort Lauderdale, South Florida. If you're thinking of making a move here, either it's next week, next month, or next year, we would love to earn your business and be your real estate resource of choice. Reach out anytime. I appreciate you watching till the end, and I'll catch you guys all on the next video. Take it easy.